All right, welcome everyone. So let's get started. I'm just going to go through these. I'm going to read these. Probably not verbatim. You're looking at the screen. This came from Steve. Living in perilous times, considered best storing precious metals. The storage facilities in the U.S. are four countries. Being that issues of un unsustainable debt, currency devaluation, bailouts, negative interest rates, manipulations, et cetera, are all global. What is to prevent these troubled governments from nationalizing these facilities and confiscating all the storage metals? Well, at law, uh, that would, uh, in theory, prevent them, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't avoid it and just move onward. And I think we're all aware that um, there's a huge breakdown throughout the global empire or the whole system. And uh, a lot of people, especially the, uh, the power elite, are just basically um, consider themselves to be exempt. So my big answer on that would be, it is a concern, I agree, but, you know, in theory, law would prevent that. I've asked this question many experts and have yet to receive a response. So my idea here is, you know, do what's best for you. I do recommend some storage facilities, both foreign and domestic, and I do trust them. And some of these guys, in my opinion, would probably, uh, you know, battle to the death is extreme uh, to protect uh, their own investments and whatever. But anyway, I don't be too dramatic here. So, you know, I'm always about you being your best and making your own decisions. And I'm here to help you as much as I possibly can. Uh, Martin Armstrong, psychotherapist, uses computer programs, economic confidence model, concerns suppression of prices. He says precious metals dealers and experts blame conspiracies and manipulations. They cannot uh, prove to rip off a, a lot of people by selling fantasies and sophistry. They never say sell, uh, only buy more on the way down. The followers are blind. They are fueled for these types of operations who care nothing about what they're doing to the readers. Uh, that gold rises when people lose confidence in government. That's true, and confidence in general. It has nothing to do with inflation. Not exactly true, although I understand his argument. He believes that gold will no, go no higher than five or 6,000. No one knows for sure. It's a big numbers from today's perspective. I highly respect your insights and experience. I also find value in Martin's work, yet this causes me concern. Is everything that we have been seeing, believe in experience, just a farce? No, it's not. It's reality. We are seeing, again, a breakdown in the whole system. Uh, you name it, what country? You want to go to the Eurozone? You want to go to the United States? You want to go to the Far East? <clears throat> there is huge dislocations throughout the system. I will say that the ECM is something that a lot of people give a lot of confidence in. Uh, I know about Martin Armstrong from the early 2000s. I had no idea who he was. One of the first lectures I did in Canada, a lot of people came up to me and were insisting that Marty knew a lot about the silver market more than me and that uh, he was short the market. Now it's around $5 an ounce. Uh, I respect his thinking. I think he's extremely smart. Uh, but no one gets it right 100% of the time. If you do a lot of research, and I'm not going to do it for you, you'll find that he has made errors just like the rest of us. Uh, you know, again, it comes back to you. I'm going to put it back to you. Uh, as far as, you know, where gold could go, in theory, it could go to infinity because a currency could go to zero. If you use zero in the denominator, then obviously you can get an infinite number. Uh, five, 6,000 looks okay. James Declare said 50,000. I don't want to belabor this point, Steve. I think hopefully I've answered your questions or at least I've touched on it. So next one from uh, uh, Carl's, I guess, is this question ties in from uh, one I submitted a couple days ago, if memory serves correctly during a time where there's a drastic shortage of silver in the retail market. Many people are saying the problem was a major shortage of silver. Although I remember reading China, India, and Russia purchased lots of silver. I also remember someone from the Sunshine Mine mining being interviewed on the Daily Corner Silver Doctors. The impression I got was that Sunshine was not having problems getting silver and their problems were running at full speed. Uh, so there was a total shortage of silver. It was basically just a retail market. There, we have written an article. I think you had to review it. There is no shortage in silver. You can Google that. Again, it's, there's no shortage in silver. I believe it's under by Chris Marchese, uh, maybe under my name or both of our names. Basically, there has not been a silver shortage. There has been some supply shortage or disruptions, and I can use the word shortage in quotation marks, uh, of retail demand because the demand has been greater than what the market's been able to supply. So in, in uh, legal ease, yeah, there was a shortage of that product, but a shortage of silver eagles is not a, a shortage of silver. Again, read the article, there is no shortage in silver. I ask mainly because there does not seem to be any shortage of supply now. There really has never been 
a supply shortage of silver. There has been a few times that we have had a retail supply shortage due to, again, manufacturing. And premiums are back down again, purchased a fair amount on Black Friday, 29 cents over, you got a good price, you're gonna pay 29 cents over, good for you. On to Jerry. With the government manipulation of paper contracts, both gold and silver, and they're able to keep price depressed. How can we know when a good entry price for silver? Any commodity, when you can buy it under the cost of production, it's a good time to buy. It doesn't mean you're getting the exact low, but it's certainly a good time to buy. I'll digress a little bit. I've been studying the markets for 40 years or more. I continue my study. I continue to learn more. There's a book uh, by Weiss, and it's not the Weiss that we all think of with the uh, the money. Um, I forget his name of his several newsletters. He's in Florida. He's been around forever. But this guy wrote a book on you can't lose trading commodities. And the whole premise of that book is that if you can buy any commodity, cotton, cocoa, silver, under what the producer can produce it for, and you have patience, you are buying in a good time. So I definitely adhere to that. It's been ridiculous and has not tracked with the variables that would seem to influence the price. Agreed. Do you have a track record data that shows how you have done the stock conventions since you recommended them? Not really. Uh, some of them that we're still holding, like the top tier that's obviously there, it's printed in the print form every newsletter. Many that we entered uh, all were out of, for example, Western Copper that got in well under a dollar. It was bought by Glamis, and that was bought by Gold Corp. So the people that follow us into that stock own uh, Gold Corp shares or they've sold them. That was a huge winner, probably 30, 40 times on your money. Uh, Silver Standard, we got in 65 cents Canadian. I sold it at 20. Whether people sold it when I did, I don't know. So really, on the work that we do, it's really difficult to um, show you exactly what we've done. And if I show you what I've done, it doesn't really help you necessarily because unless you got in and out exactly when I did, you're going to have a different print. But the general idea, take it or leave it, is uh, – you know, we did very well during the 2000 to 2011 time frame. I did call the top. Uh, there's people on the Internet out there have actually retired because they, they put a pretty fair amount of uh, long positions on when I told them to, or I shouldn't say I told them to, when I showed what I was doing when I got in at 19 and then back in at 26 and wrote it to 48 and got out. Um, if you had a few uh top mutual fund for silver what would i buy there isn't a silver mutual fund yet there used to be the lexington fund which was excellent but it doesn't exist anymore mutual fund for gold bullion and why it's your choice i mean i like frank holmes work i like uh, hathaway's uh fund they're both good they're both good people they both study hard uh again i put it back onto you type in gold bullion fund performance in the google hathaway's good uh, frank holmes is good there's a couple more out there uh i like them uh, but it's kind of what you want. You can look at over the portfolio, see w which ones are leveraged to what, and kind of make your own decision. Uh, besides that, I cannot give individual investment advice on a webinar like this. What about our top recommendation funds for both silver and gold stocks and why? I think that's why you subscribe to the Morgan Report. I don't have time to go into that, but certainly on the right track. And the most undervalued part of the sector right now is in the, in the mine and equities. Uh, Robert? Is there a video report to read that best explains why you were able to see the downturn in the metals? A few years ago, there isn't, uh, other than if you were on the service, you would see exactly what I did, exactly when I did it, and why I did it, and I explained it. And My memory's great, but not perfect, and I don't want to misstate it. But I saw the top, I called it as I see them. Uh, a lot of people were calling me out on it, saying somebody's going to 100, I was going to lose my reputation, I was going to none and none, on and on, a lot of negativity was thrown at me. Nonetheless, I did my own work, I said it was a top and it was. Uh, is there an investment grade guide or principle to learn from the downturn? I think the most important thing, since I've got 40 years of experience, is one experience that I can't give you, although you can get a lot of it if you subscribe to the board report. Other than that, uh, I've learned the hard way, sell into, sell into strength. Do not sell after a top. So always leave some for the next guy. Don't try to get the last tick. When everybody wants it, let them have it. Everybody was screaming for silver. I was moving up past 35. I knew things were getting tight. Did I get lucky or skillful at the exact top? I don't know. I've called all three tops in a row, and they've all been almost exact. My bottom calling, as we all know, has not been as good. Is there something that has to do with being able to see how the overall market is functioning? Yes, it does in cash flow. Yes, it does. And those factor in. 
I'd say it's more of an art than a science. Sentiment actually helps. Having a newsletter actually helps because you can see when you get, you know, a whole bunch of new subscribers, you know, three days in a row or something, much more than you normally get. Uh, that's a pretty good indicator that uh, we're getting near a top as an example and just an indicator. Also, should the average CPA be able to do paperwork for metals investing, or do I look for a CPA? That's really up to you. It depends on involved you are. Where do you look? Probably on Google. Uh, these are the type of questions you can write to the editor. I don't have time to do it right now. Uh, where we probably give you either an individual uh, answer on that type of thing. If you're in the basic plus service, then you are. Uh, if you want to resubmit that, that's probably fine. I might be able to help you. I'd have to have more information where you live, uh, you know, if there's someone, something outside of the U.S., we have a lot of subscribers in Canada and worldwide, I probably wouldn't be able to help you, but, you know, just because I recommend a CPA doesn't mean that's the best one for you. That's really an individual choice. Moving on to billing. As a newbie here in the USA, I seem to be confused on how to buy stocks on the TSX through an online brokerage. I opened a Scott Trade account and was given, I was given where the OTC version of the stocks are, Second part of the question is, is it beneficial or mandatory once I step on the brokerage in the TSX to convert my US dollars to exchange stocks? Any online broker can get you a TSX or a Vancouver Venture Exchange stock. They don't like to do it. They're lazy, but they have to do it pretty much. Uh, usually you have to use the phone. They'll do the uh, currency conversions both ways, so you don't have to worry about it. You usually have to either give them a market order. I always recommend a limit order if you're a member of the market report read and reread and you could also send it although i don't recommend stealing our work and putting it on the internet uh certainly you could probably copy the pdf or the essence of it and send it to your broker scott trader whoever and just uh the name of the report is um making green on the pinks written by david smith it explains how to work in the canadian markets as a person in the united states and how to put in your orders and protect yourself uh, that report alone is probably priceless, but, you know, I think we put it at like 29 bucks. It is what it is. That would be something, Billy, if you're a member of the Morgan Report. Download that, read it, and that will help you on this question. Uh, Sammy, I live in Canada, and uh, his assets are in the Canadian dollars. Moment for, for me, or the U.S.? Uh, no, it's worldwide. 40% uh, of our subscriber base is in Canada. And that's something that I think is important, um, you know, for everybody on this webinar to know. Uh, probably, generally speaking, the Canadians are a bit more savvy than the North Americans. Being subscribes to a membership service like ours, it's usually pretty wide awake and aware of what's really going on. So uh, you're in France, um, good friends in France, several, in fact, the guy that writes 24-hour goals, good friend of mine, Eric Lemaire, now in Belgium. Something you can give it a shot. I mean, the, the basic service, which we're going to be ending uh, in February, is something we can still get for an extremely low price. Michael, I read recently U.S. domestic silver production is falling. What are your views on domestic producers generally and CDE and MEX specifically? Uh, yes, U.S. domestic supply is falling. Uh, but remember, this is only like 5 6 7% of the market. I haven't done the math, but we're looking at something that produces 20 million ounces of the 800 million ounce market. So you're looking at around 5%. If my math is done in my head, which it is. So does that concern us? Not really. Uh, generally, uh, some of the domestics I like. I mean, we got into Hecla at 50 cents. It's sold at 5 bucks for a 10 bagger. We haven't been in Hecla for a long time. And not that you couldn't. Uh, Coeur d'Alene, not my favorite. Uh, McEwen Mining very much. I mean, we follow McEwen forever. David Smith actually has a very strong relationship with Rob. We do talk about them. We have had companies run by him. Uh, so that's my thoughts on them. I hope in a general way it's not a recommendation. Steve, are the gold and silver ETFs, GLD and SLB, actually fund of physical metal and gold and vault somewhere? Yes. Or are they more or less paper investments? Yes. They are funded by physical, but then the exchange lets them uh, provide a COMEX warehouse receipt as physical, which, of course, it's not. It's a piece of paper. Are these rehypothecated? If you read the prospectuses, they are. So is there physical backing them up? Yes, there is. But is it a one-to-one -one correspondence? No, it is not. Why am I asking the question? I've been reading the Problem materials from Major Investment Guru. 
Uh, Vinesh, who recommends using put options with these ETFs to invest in the metals and generate income on the investment. I learned this gentleman from one of your emails a month or so ago. Yes, Vinesh does what's called synthetics. It's all in the paper markets. If you do what he says, he's got a pretty good track record, and it's basically beating the bankers at their own game. But I would not recommend this to just anybody, Steve. You have to be a pretty sophisticated investor and understand the uh, difference between you know what he's doing and what the physical markets are doing. They basically are, again, playing the paper markets against the bankers. It is a way to generate income, but it's a learning process, and it also depends on your account size. I wouldn't recommend this for somebody that just has like a protected position in the physical market. Probably been worth it to you, but only you can answer that, Steve. Karsten, thanks a lot for your help. Mine is. I have 25% of my investment in precious metals junior stocks, 60% bullion and 15 gold bullion. My junior stocks are down 40%. I don't recall this is barely hit during the last crash. Would it be better to sell the juniors now and buy after the crash rather than holding through the crash? My recommendation on this is hopefully not individual advice. It's what I've written in the Morgan Report here recently. I'll just restate it that I don't think you'd want to try to sell now and buy back later. I think we're so near the bottom, especially if you've gone this far. Why? Why concern yourself? What if it goes up from here? You've missed the bottom. If you held this long, uh, my idea would be continue. Steve, one of the several years, one of the last several years, I've been accumulating silver, mostly junk silver, silver dollars, and ounce liberties, kind of accumulation. But worst case scenario happens, and the comedy crashes. If you have concerns, he goes, what do you do with all the silver? Go back to read the 10 rules of silver investing. If you Google 10 rules of silver investing, it's on several, several websites, and it's on YouTube, and I did a YouTube uh, video on it. Everyone that's on this call may or may not know the YouTube channel, Silver Guru. So if you go to YouTube, Type in David Morgan or type in Silver Guru. You'll get to our YouTube channel. Where do I take it? Who do I sell it to and how do I use it? All those questions are answered for you. But, uh, you know, Steve, you're smart enough to know. You can take it to any dealer in your town. You can put it on eBay. You can uh, put it in the newspaper. Uh, but basically what I said in the 10 rules of Sir Investing is rule number one. Read rule number one, and you will have all of those questions answered. Kerry. Uh, is there anything like Silver Saver outside of the U.S.? Uh, not to my knowledge, Kerry. The Silver Saver is available in Canada, and it's available in the United States. And uh, it's something that I'm very favorable to. I do have an account with them. And they have now, if you go to the website, silver-investor.com, and come over here at the top, and you get this uh, Onex. If you click this Onex, Right here, it will take you to the site, and you can create an account. It takes about 10 minutes or less, and that will be uh, a very good way to accumulate silver, gold, platinum, palladium. It can be stored. We recommend, of course, you take possession of it. They don't ship a coin at a time. You have to, I think, accumulate like 20 coins, and they'll ship them to you. Gold, that's not true. Gold, they will ship you a coin at a time or, or an a incremental coin, like a half ounce or whatever. So it's a great way to go. It's also got an affiliate program, so if you have any kind of email list at all, uh, it's a great way to go. Carrie, unfortunately, I don't know anything about New Zealand, although I just met with the ONEX group one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I flew out there, actually, and spoke with them. And there are plans to expand it, but uh, until it happens, I wouldn't uh, you know, be able to say anything more. So moving on, Troy, uh, I'd just like to see if this is for me. I'm just starting to buy some silver in 2015. I don't have a lot of money. I'm trying to do some research on mining and help with grateful. Uh, you're the best. Thank you. Uh, with lots of experience, that's true. I am trying to learn 52. My idea here is, look, this, is, this report is not for everyone. This is for people that have had uh, what I call their seasoned investors. These are people who understand the hows and whys of precious metals investing and why you would want to be in the precious metals asset class at, a, say, a 10 or even a 20% allocation. Uh, for some of this brand new, you have nothing to compare it to. In the letter, we keep it as simplified as possible, but still we have to use financial terms and that kind of thing. Is it over some people's heads? Probably is. We don't design it to be that way. But nonetheless, unless you subscribe to a lot of the garbage that's out there and you see what other people do and don't do, you have no reference point. So, Troy, I don't think uh, that this would serve you the best. Certainly, if you wanted to do a trial subscription for six months, where we got 78 bucks before we up the price, 
We're actually going to stop the basic service altogether. Uh, you know, if that is not a big event for you, then you might get a lot of education in six months, and plus you can look at uh, a lot of other bonus material that's on the website for our members. And the worst that would happen is you get a greater education. But that's your call, not mine. If you're kind of new, it, it's probably not in your best interest. Hank Venekip, uh, what time, at what time do silver go parabolic? Is it time when gold gets too expensive, around 3000 and what is the proper price of day's wages? So we don't go parabolic when it does. I mean, if I was going to guess a time frame, probably 2018. Uh, but, you know, there's always the black swans. I know I use that, and it's not an excuse. It's a reality. If it happened, it could go almost in any time. Uh, I think he's implying here that when gold gets too expensive, would, would, would that Im, uh, imply that silver would – you know, play catch up or exceed or, or narrow the ratio, and the answer is yes. There isn't really a proper price. I'm guessing I've said in other uh, interviews 2500 but the idea is what's important, not the exact price, so I cannot give you a price. What's the correct price for an uh, ounce of silver a day's wedges, wages? Yes, I would say that is true. Okay, Edward, what is going on with GGR? GLD and SLW. We've addressed that in the Margaret report. I don't know if you're a subscriber. I don't really have time, Edward, to go through it here, but we do company updates almost every report in depth. And then again, if you're a premium member, you can write us and, you know, give, we would probably give you even more information or at least readdress it. So we constantly look at these companies uh, every time, and uh, I'm not going to give that out for free at this time. Uh, <clears throat> Terry, I've been buying silver for 10 years now, both certified MS and PR 70, uh, 40 to 50,000 invested. I have approximately 6,000 in cash. I'm thinking buy more silver. If you were me, would you buy more silver? No, I wouldn't. I think you've got enough at this point. Uh, 6,000, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't run your life, nor do I wish to. Thanks for the question, Terry. I think I'd probably do something fun, maybe not with all 6,000. Maybe look at the equity side. It's the most underappreciated. I really, really think that, uh, you know, you've probably got a fair amount of bullion, it looks like. Uh, you might take, uh, you know, one uh, top tier for the Morgan Report, one mid tier for the Morgan Report, maybe speculate on our our newest recommendation that uh, we put out the report for free it gives you all the information except the name and symbol of the company. And if you're really good with Google, you could probably figure that out for free. So that's my thoughts, Terry. It's up to you. Um, you know, the equity side does give you more upside, but it also gives you more downside. Uh, okay, William, when do you expect to see three-digit silver? Uh, probably a couple of years out, 2018 or so, or one ounce rounds better investment than silver bars. I think so. I like smaller denominations unless you're a big investor. So I'd rather have 100 uh, silver rounds than a one 100 ounce bar. It's a lot easier. You don't have to make one decision to make sure that decision is correct. If you have 100 coins or 100 rounds, you could sell 10. And if it's wrong, you could sell 10 more. And if you're wrong, you could sell 10 more, that type of thing. When do you expect to see the crash of the dollar and how will that affect the price of silver? It will affect it greatly. And it has been crashing from the time it was in inception of the Federal Reserve in 1913. And let me restate that. The dollar is a weight of silver, 371.25 grains of 9995 silver. That's what a dollar is. Uh, but the the Fed created private money script that we call a dollar has been failing since its inception. And yes, it will affect the price of silver. I expect it to happen within the next five years at the outside. I think it will be sooner than that. So that hopefully answered your question. Uh, Kendall, he called the top at 48. Uh, I've talked a lot about the price of silver will go maybe the three digits I have. It's in writing. It's in my first book. What I'm wondering is how you will know or what will be the difference this time, $48 or that area or is the top uh, going to happen? What's the difference? So I think what he's asking here, I'll just answer this the way I read the question, and that is when we get to that level, what's going to happen? And I think what's going to happen is it will stall. And it may stall and come down. It may have to try it, trade up through it again. It may... Um, had, you know, stall out two or three times, but I do believe that it will go through that, and I do think it will get into triple digit silver or close enough for all, you know, practical purposes. In other words, 88 is not 100. I understand that, but um, uh, 
So that's it. <clears throat> um, okay. Um, let me do this. All right. Whoops. Where am I here? I'm not sure which screen I've got here. You're on the left screen. Uh, yeah, the I, right screen is your viewable screen, David. Yeah, I know that. I mean, I'm not sure which webinar one I've got. So next question comes in from uh, Michael. Oh, let's see. The, this week there's a full-page ad in Bancor Daily News. of Maine it was offering uh, quarter-ounce silver bars. Basically what this guy's saying is that the United States Commander of Gallery, Gallery excuse me, at 7800 but Bull Avenue Northwest of Canton, Ohio is basically a ripoff to give the industry a bad name. What can we do? Well, you can write them. Uh, you know, this is for the general public that's really unaware of what's going on. They see these big full-page ads. They are a ripoff. Stay away from them. Uh, you can inform your friends. I don't know what else you can do. But uh, thanks for pointing that out. I totally agree with what he said. Thomas, one, I see China buying a lot of gold, maybe to back the currency question mark, and I agree, maybe to back the currency question mark. I'm not sure. I have seen speculations that they're the ones uh, supplying the silver market just to get as much gold as possible before the price manipulation blows up. What would a gold back you want do to the price of silver? Uh, probably help it. I mean, there were, when I was working uh, more closely with some of the Asian community, uh, they called silver the new gold. So if you went on a gold standard, then silver would become the new gold. And I don't know if you catch the metaphor of what that means exactly, but uh, you can think about it. Do you think this means in today's dollar value, or is he saying the dollar will be worth, oh, Jim Seclair says $50,000 gold. I think he means worthless, but I don't want to speak for Jim, uh, but that's the way I interpret it. He asked me, that's the way I see it. If a serious deflation is just around the corner, or already here, would you recommend paying down a mortgage or buying more precious metals? Your call, I think being debt-free is really the safest way to be, but I'm ultra-conservative, even though people that deal in the precious metals, most people think we are speculators. The truth is, uh, this is money that's never failed, whereas every other has. So we're really actually the most conservative. Does the fact that I'm living in Norway affect your answer? No, it affects somewhat, but really affects my answers. I don't know all the details about you. I don't want to give out that kind of advice as far as me personally. If it were me, I would be as debt-free as possible. And once that's accomplished, then I would buy more precious metals. Uh, would you buy recommend, uh, recommend buying mining stocks now? Yes. If so, which ones? That's what I do for a living. It's in a top-tier, mid-tier category. Again, you can uh, get on the basic service or what I consider to be the best value in the industry, the premium service, before the price goes up. Right now, it's $269 in a year, U.S. terms, and it's going to jump to $500. But once you're a member, you can lock in that price forever. Any thoughts on how deflation or hyperinflation will affect the man on the street drastically or on a farm like me? Not nearly as much. In a country like Norway, I just came back from Stockholm, Sweden, so I got a pretty fair idea of uh, your circumstances, but not explicit. I was only there for about four days. Uh, we have our own currency, not euros, and a pretty big uh, pension fund. I don't have any foreign, and I don't think we have any foreign debt. I'd have to check because I really don't know. You know, I think in that area, you're probably better off uh, than a lot of other areas of the world that I have uh, visited. But uh, no one really knows how this is going to unwind. Are silver rounds just as val valuable, this is from Jeff, are silver rounds just as valuable as U.S. Mint silver eagles? The answer is melted down, yes. Uh, at a coin shop, it depends where we are in the market. If you walk in with some rounds or some eagles to the same coin shop, you'll probably get a buyback premium on the eagles, but not as big as the spread as when you bought them. But uh, they usually do hold a premium. Uh, certain years, of course, hold a bigger premium because they are considered semi-numismatic uh, uh, because the mintages are so low. Uh, basically, it's up to you. I mean, a lot of people prefer eagles. Some prefer rounds. It's basically your call. But uh, just be advised, Jeff, that on the buyback, uh, it makes a little bit of difference, but not a lot. Tom writes, uh, seems like government in Peru, influenced by China, possible or other reasons, will allow Bear Creek some slack, providing a reasonable court award with provision it be invested in Peru. This is not widely known. It is now. Thank you, Tom. I shouldn't say widely known, but known to this group. Steve writes, 
your most respected in the industry. Thank you for the compliment. I was a subscriber, did renew. I subscribe to numerous publications, keep abreast of the market. I feel your services are most important to educate the public in regards to the silver market. We do so much more in the silver market, but certainly we speak about it almost every issue. Uh, please consider repricing you to the most so more people can participate. Does $89 times 5 million uh, subscribers work for you? Yes, it would. I think about it. I don't have to. That works. Right now, the basic service is 129 which is like uh, 40 bucks more than 90 uh, I don't see a big difference there. So uh, certainly we don't have 5 million subscribers, but I would like to. So I'm not exactly sure, Stephen, what you're saying, but nonetheless, thank you again for the compliments. David, for those who have been following your excellent education regarding the precious metals, especially silver, and acquired more than a modest amount of physical model, how does one go about moving it to a safer offshore jurisdiction? This is the kind of thing that, um, you, know, you can write in as a member, so we could probably set you up and forward your email to a couple of people that we're familiar with and I've associated with for years. I don't know all of the parameters to make the best recommendation for you, uh, but that is something that we do. If you're a premium member, we do uh, promise to uh, answer your emails. With the increasing worries of capital controls in Western countries, expatriating some of one's wealth along with oneself at St. Prudent. Agreed. Okay. Bob, uh, recently on Jim Sinclair website, Bill Holter referred to a discussion with John Embry as to where their silver supply was coming from in their discussion about China having a great deal with the U.S. and the gold price. Can you add to this point that they have made? Well, first of all, John Embry and I talk probably twice a month and have similar discussions that he has with Bill. Uh, John and I have been friends for a very long time, and Bill Holter and I are friends. I don't agree with uh, Jim uh, well, Bill and John on this entirely. Uh, first of all, China was a net exporter of 100 million ounces up until a year. Uh, I don't forget the year, but it might have been 2008. I really can't remember. Uh, it's in earlier interviews. If you want to dig back in there. And then they became from a net exporter to a net importer of about 100 million ounces. A lot of the smelting takes place in China. Uh, I've been to China. I have met with the Mining Bureau. I've met with CIDIC. I've been at the top of the building almost, not the top floor, but close to it. The higher up you go uh, as the prestige, if you want to think of it in those terms. I think that um, they may be supplying uh, the market from the aspect of so much is smelted and they have to export some back out. I and mean, if you're a mining company and you ship in uh, concentrate that comes back in uh, thousand ounce bars, and it's your silver, you're going to get it back. So I really don't buy the idea that they're like that was made in that article entirely. But I have to be as honest as possible, which means that I'm not certain, but neither are they. So uh, I'm a little cautious on that one. Uh, Dennis, do you plan to cover the Canadian junior miners? We do, we have, and we will, but that's not our focus. Uh, how about one's public shares that only train the Canadian exchanges on American? Yes. We do that in more than report. Uh, Carlos, I have been uh, stacking silver and gold coins, bars and rounds for some time. And over the last few years, millions upon millions of ounces of each of us have been stacked by investors wanting to protect their wealth and make a profit. When it does come to pass, when a fiat currency does fail and or the manipulation of precious metals comes to an end and the precious metals start to go up as a result, how much of a mitigating effect will the vast piles of precious metals, of stackers, et cetera, have compiled over the last past years on the potential increases of the price? Uh, otherwise, what is the possibility that there will be enough precious metal stockpile by stackers that any major price increases would be mostly held down to a quiet roar or less. So basically, I'm going to summarize what he's saying is, look, there's a lot out there than a silver stacker and a gold stacker, we're going to call them that community. And so as the price goes up, what's to prevent them from selling? The answer, nothing. And how much of a suppression effect will it have on a price? And the answer is as much as it does. And I know that's a stupid answer. It's the most accurate one I can give you because the market makes those determinations. So people that, uh, you know, bought silver at, let's say, 15 and I guess the 30 may just get out of it. They double their money. They're happy as can be, and they never come back to the market. Other people think it's going to go to 100 and they'll hold on, and everything in between. My idea is that this time it might be a situation where people are panic buying and they're not willing to sell hardly any price, and that's going to be the toughest on me because if that's the way the market manifests, then if I do put out a sell signal, 
uh, I got to be very, very careful. My thoughts right now, subject to change, if you're a member of the Morgan Report, obviously you'll get it real time, is that to probably sell the paper and hold the metal until I'm absolutely sure, or at least sell part of the metal and hold the rest. I'm not sure I'd ever sell all of it until things are really settled down. Selling into a panic really takes guts. If you're overloaded, obviously you can, but <clears throat> I've addressed this in the past. I don't want to belabor it. Uh, Andy, hey, David, just wondering what you think that silver will outprice gold, sell your gold and buy silver. He's talking about the spread. Excuse me. Uh, the gold-silver ratio is something that we look at a lot. I do it in the Morgan Report. It's me with the charts. My boys, right now, I think if you can uh, swap your gold for silver when we're above, let's say, a ratio of 75 to 1, you're probably doing a really good thing, even 70 to 1. And you can swap back the other way when the uh, ratio gets like 35. I've already done it a couple times myself. Not perfectly, but those are the basic ideas. It's a good way to increase your metals position. Rick writes, countries do something to devalue their currencies. What specifically do they do to cause currency devalue? I'm thinking specifically of China. Basically, uh, it's a function of how much money they print, but really it's determined by the currency markets. I mean, there's more money flowing around in currency trading than probably anything else, and that's a real determinant. And, of course, banks defend it. So these, um, like, for example, the Exchange Stabilization Fund, I think you could do a Google research and read up on this, Rick. I don't have time to go into it. But basically it has to do with the ebb and flow of the currency markets. And central banks do defend their currencies from time to time, and they can influence the market, at least in the short term. But remember, all these, all these countries are basically pr printing to infinity at different rates, some faster than others and it doesn't end well on a global basis. James made the decision to stay in precious metals and supply the bear market. By now, years later, it may be depressed. We'd be way ahead if we stayed out of the markets. Question, what, ha what hasn't your perpetual prediction of a bull market materialized? I, um, you know, I would take a little average with that. I mean, basically, we start at the bottom. No one cared less about, you know, what I was doing in my work. I mean, we had very few subscribers. The only people buying silver at the bottom besides myself and very few others from the billionaires. Warren Buffett was buying. Uh, Bill Gates was buying. George Soros, who I'm not that fond of, was buying. And we were right from uh, 2000 to the, when I called the top of uh, April 2011. So, you know, 10 years of being correct. I did say we would get a correction. Uh, and I thought it could be two years when I first said it. And then I said three, and then I was wrong, and it went on to four or actually more. Uh, you usually get these huge corrections as part of it. If you were a subscriber, you would actually know, you know, kind of week to week, month to month, year to year exactly, you know, doing my best work for you. Uh, but the idea that the bull market is over is advocated by some. I don't believe it. Uh, this would be the first time in uh, – recorded history that we have these kind of financial problems and the bull market died. So uh, in the end, it's either gold wins or paper wins. I'm voting for gold, but certainly, uh, James, you're entitled to whatever you want. But a uh, bull market is not a perpetual up move. I'm well aware of that, believe me, because I've been to the other market. This is very similar to what happened in the 1970s bull market, which I did go through. Lauren writes, how uh, low can silver go? Central Fund of Canada is still a viable plan to protect one's currency. Yes, I mean, Central Fund's fine. Uh, you know, if you can't get the physical or you prefer not to have it or you live in an apartment or whatever, uh, thank you for all you do. Thank you, Lauren. How low can it go? I don't know. Only the market does. I think we've probably reached the bottom, but we'll see. Francis. Uh, I've heard you reference Martin Armstrong in the past. What do you think of this prediction based on his economic confidence model? I give it some weight. I think he's probably better than most, but not perfect. None of us are. Do you have any idea of his turning point in gold and silver? I forget. I think he said something about October of last year, but uh, I'd have to go back and Google it. You might do the same. Harold writes, is it safe to hold large amounts of cash in the bank in a safe deposit box? No, not generally. It depends on your jurisdiction and what state you're in. So you'd have to find out. But in some states, such as the one I'm in, and New York and a few others, or maybe most of them, I don't know. You'd have to do the research yourself. Uh, you're subject to the bank's whims. If they want to go and look at your safe deposit box, they can. So be very careful about that. If not, where would a person store cash? 
I would go to a private vaulting facility. I think that's probably the best. I must have access to the cash for business purposes understood. Again, there are private vaulting facilities that you can look up on the internet. I used to recommend one in, uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, I forget the name of it. It used to be called 24-7 Private Vaults. You might Google that and find it. Also, is it safe to store gold and silver in safe deposit box? I already answered that. Be careful. I wouldn't do it. I don't have one. I do have a private vaulting facility. Uh, David, of all the buying of gold and silver in China, the Chinese consumers are doing, uh, why aren't the pandas selling out much sooner? Their mintage is eight million. What's more, and silver eagles? The premium panda is more, which leads me to believe the more in demand. They have a very high premium, so a lot of people aren't willing to spend their, you know, pay for that premium. But they usually maintain their premium. I mean, this again is a personal call, Phil. I mean, I have nothing against them. I bought them from time to time. Um, if you bought nothing but eagles all the way up from, let's say, in the early 2000s till now, instead of eagles, you would be better off as far as what you could sell them back for. Uh, but you would have to have paid a pretty significant premium every time you bought them. So, again, it comes down to personal preference. Uh, Eight million, as you know, is a very small mintage. So that means as this market accelerates and more Chinese come to the market, you're probably making a safe bet by buying uh, Chinese pandas. But, again, um, you know, depends on what your goals are and the risk you're willing to take. If you want to pay the premium, go for it. Gordon, I noticed that point ratings of the companies in the spec, uh, silver speculation section can be higher for the rest. risky sections. Just wondering if the ratings are non or section specific. Yes, I wrote them back personally. Gordon, they are section specific. So, in other words, in theory, if you are in the speculative section and you have uh, those are just in that section so if you have a five that is less risky or a good time to buy it let's say versus let's say a three on that report for that issue and yet it would in theory hold more risk than something that it's here and that's in theory because you know all stocks are risky but we do our best but yes they are meant to be uh sector specific so gordon i did send you that one personally back to you uh rich if the economic situation gets worse in China, do you feel there's any chance a government would be forced to sell a stockpile of gold or silver to stay above water? No, I do not. If so, could this temporary low lower the metal prices even further? Yes, it would, but I don't think they're going to do it. They know, they know what it's worth. And if you can print paper, why would you sell metal? Um, what will it take for the manipulation of gold and silver prices to come to an end? It'll be a physical shortage. I never thought that it could have lasted this long. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that agree with that. Some say manipulate, others say no. I say no one sells massive amounts of contracts in the middle of the night to get the worst price possible. Also, any timeline as to when you think we'll sort of resume the bull market, I think we'll start in this year. I mean, in general, six months, one year, two years. Yeah, I think over. I, I think it'll be this year, probably through the you know six month time frame. Hard to say. I think two to three years out is easier to predict. And I think we're going to be substantially higher in that time frame. But, again, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, thanks for the question, Sean. Uh, let's see, Michael, I'm six years old, but stacking U.S. Uh, and Canadian junk silver since 1963. I had to quit several times in the last 50 years. It's taken out from the market. <clears throat> now that I've been buying 999 and 9999 bars and coins, mostly one ounce uh, and a few ten and, and five and ten ounce bars, where other – where, other than coin or pawn shops or my dealer, can I sell my hoard to? Uh, that's pretty easy, John. I mean, or uh, excuse me, Michael, I think with, as long as you've been in the market, you already know this answer. I mean, basically, if you can make a good relationship with any dealer out there online, we have several that I know personally and can trust, uh, you can mail back to them. It's pretty easy. You can go on eBay. Uh, you can put an ad in the paper. But mostly uh, a reputable dealer will work a market both directions. So there's lots of ways to sell other than uh, a private sale to some of their stackers. So, you know, that's the way I've done it. <clears throat> there's, you know, really a lot of ways to do it. Uh, how many ounces does your company have in its vault? Not enough. Um, Doug, I recently read Comex Global Inventory was very low. With a lot of precious metal manipulation talk going on, why does the Russia China just buy enough contacts and demand delivery to end the speculation? I don't think, uh, first of all, it is very low. The reason that they don't is I, they've got other things to worry about, and they wouldn't want uh, that kind of publicity. I think they're very quiet. 
certainly a nice thought, but I think it's out of the realm of reality. That's not the way these governments work, uh, or even an individual. No one really wants to take down the COMEX gold supply, although I'd love to see it. But I don't think anyone's willing to do it because of the um, price to pay uh, that would come from the authorities. Second question, the U.S. government doesn't care about gold. Why doesn't Congress vote to sell it? I don't know. You ask Congress. Um, is it important? Then why have it? Of course, it's important. Everyone knows it is. And, of course, the amount the U.S. really holds, it's very questionable, as you know. Chris, in a recent interview, Palisades Radio, brought to light the subject of investing in common stock warrants. One example, a company that offers this opportunity, Sandstorm, one of the companies in the Morgan Report. <clears throat> Excuse me for that. Uh, i love to hear David's take on warrants. I like them. Uh, Dudley Baker uh, does uh, used to do precious metals warrants. Now I think it's close to common stock warrants. He does great work. You might consider that. Uh, but warrant is just an option with a long date, and I like them. Uh, there's no reason not to be in. I just wouldn't uh, over amp. I mean, any of these speculative type of situations like options or warrants, basically use money you can afford to lose or make it relatively correct to your overall investment strategy. That would be my warning on that. Will writes, David, uh, you're one of the few trusted voices. I always enjoy listening. Thank you for the compliment. My question involves gold and silver. For the past years, I'm investing in spare income building portfolio largely based on these two metals. I hold some coins and some in an allocated vault. My question is, with any investment, it's always easy to buy in. However, one day it'll come a time to sell. I'm concerned that liquidity may be a problem. Uh, I'll stop there. I'm going to continue with these questions. Um, Liquidity might no, it could be a problem, I suppose. Uh, I doubt I doubt it, but it depends what you're doing. And if you're a member of the website, and it looks like you may be, uh, Will, there's a look in the bonus sections, and in the bonus sections, look at the uh, Edwin Vieira, Dr. Edwin Vieira's writing gold and silver contracts. There's no reason you can purchase land, a house, an automobile, a vacation home, a boat, whatever, with precious metals directly. So you don't have to cash out from the cash and then make the transfer. It's easier to do it that way, I fully admit it. But you could spend your your holdings if you wish. So continuing on, assuming prices of gold and silver shoot up in the future, I decided to sell my metals or what I perceive as the high of the market. Will gold and silver be an easy or difficult proposition? I'd say easy because in tops, everybody wants it. And again, as I said earlier in this um, webinar, you give them what they want. Sell it in the strength. Everybody wants it. Give it to them. In other words, how liquid an asset are they? There's nothing more liquid in the world and never has been as precious metals. So hopefully I've answered that for you. And you can Google it and get some others' opinions. That's certainly my experience and what the market's shown for centuries. What do you see the U.S. dollar during 2016 and 17? Great question. I haven't put a lot of thought into this. Um, I think we're probably going to stall out around the hundred dollar, hundred level. Excuse me, on the uh, U.S. X U.S. Uh, dollar index, and I don't think it's going to go up much more from here. I think it's going to wallow around, uh, but I don't see it crashing. Although it could, I wouldn't rule it out. I again, uh, Mike, think that uh, we've probably seen the most uh, increase in the dollar that we. Uh, will experience for the last couple of years. I don't think it's got a lot more to the upside. Dave, uh, what to do with cash? 28% savings retirement invested, physical balance and paper, non-precious metals managed portfolio. I have a pile of cash from the end of last year. Is now the time for the mining portfolio? I think so. Uh, but I've thought that for a while. But these things have been very undervalued quite some time. So again, if you're buying un something undervalued that's unloved and no one's paying attention to and you have some patience, you're going to do well. How much risk with overall market crash potential that the mining stocks will go down to toilet as well? Probably could or would temporarily, but they're so oversold right now, I don't see that as something significant, although I don't want to be uh, untruthful in any way, usually there is a sympathy because stocks are stocks, even though they're mining stocks. In most cases, you're buying the top tier or the mid tier that we have in the Morgan Report. They can hold up better because they represent real assets, even some of our juniors, too. A lot of our juniors are actually top tier compared to some of these penny stocks. But regardless, uh, you know, it's worth the risk. I mean, if you're, you know, this is a strategy that only you can decide, Dave, but. Uh, 
and I'm sure your outside the box <laughs> is part of your uh, email address. Anyway, you're obviously a smart guy. I think it's something that you can study. If you're not a member, I suggest you become one. Okay, Keith, is there any real difference between only silver eagles or just bullion? Not when it comes to selling the back that much. Uh, it's personal choice, really. I realize that one is mentioned and the other is not, but overall, if silver goes up or down the relationship dollar-wise, change that much between the In a hot market, when things are moving up, the spread's narrow, which means that uh, you know, you'll get as much for a bar as you get for 100 coins. Exactly no, but close to it. So it depends what part of the market you're in. Uh, but his idea is the sound. If you look at the 10 rules of silver investing again, You'll see what I have to say about that. I, I discuss it in detail. Paul writes, being a Brit and living in uh, Thailand, uh, Thailand, sorry, uh, let me woke me up to about gold. Gold in the Far East is very important. And when you consider most people living in Thailand earn between four pounds and six pounds a day if they're lucky. Most people on that wage own gold, but in the UK not many people have much gold. There's such a vast difference. I never owned gold in the UK, but I do now. Thank you, Paul, for that information. Very true. Uh, a lot of these people outside of what I call the Anglo-American Empire are extremely savvy as far as monetary history, uh, whereas in the, in our in the Anglo-American Empire, not so much. David, is it axiomatic that silver rises, gold rises, and won't see the gold silver ratio return to 20 or 21 or 15 to 1? I think so. Uh, you know, you can read Engineering the Price of Gold. Just Google David Morgan in uh, Engineering the Price of Gold. You can read that article I wrote so many years ago on what I think will happen in the last leg of the bull market, which is yes to manifest. I attempted to buy your book, Silver Manifest, on Amazon and directly from your website. All I get is a do not ship to Canada. Any advice? You go back to the silvermanifesto.com and read it a little more carefully, or maybe you haven't been on that site. So go to the silvermanifesto.com. We know it's a real pain for Canadians, and I'm sorry. I apologize. There's nothing I can do about it, but we'll get you the book. I'll have my secretary mail it to you. But you have to pay us a shipping charge, and I don't even charge you with handling, and I pay her to handle it. So uh, the shipping costs are exorbitant. Uh, if you can figure out a way to get Amazon to carry the book in Canada, thank you. Write me back personally. But we've tried, and no luck. Uh, name, wiped out almost. Um, here we go again today, another minor wipeout. The banks are in there with their high frequency of trading, down, down, down. When gold is even on the day. Uh, explain that to me, please. I don't really have time. Um, but basically, all markets are driven by buying and selling. When there's lots of selling, it's going to drive the price down. I've done this in multiple interviews. If you listen to three or four of my interviews, you'll probably catch on. And you probably already have. But uh, you might Google that and get others' opinions. It's really not that difficult to understand. The markets are controlled pretty much by a lot of things, high-frequency trading being one of many. Steve asks, do you think we'll experience deflation or inflation? And if deflation, do you think what will happen to the precious metals as well as the stocks. Well, uh, Steve, uh, I've addressed this multiple times. I mean, first of all, if you look at Professor Jastrom's work, gold does best in a deflation, not an inflation. If you look at John Exter's work, um, you can type that into Google. You can read about a deflationary environment. I favor stagflation, really, where you have increasing prices but uh, low economic activity. I'm not trying to get out of the question. What happens is there's a reallocation of asset classes into what's valuable and what isn't. Things that you need become more valuable. Things that you don't need go by the buy and buy. For example, multiple McMansions are really more than you need in most cases. So like luxury homes may decrease more than, let's say, a three-bedroom house that meets all of your needs versus shelter over your head. Uh, deflation, how quickly do you think QE4 will be introduced? Well, you already answered your own question, which means bias to inflation, which I believe you're correct. In fact, I adhere to that myself. Uh, I think fairly soon. It's hard to say. The biggest fear of central banks is deflation, but it can get out of hand. And uh, they are, could be pushing it on a string, meaning that no matter how much money they print, it really doesn't do any good. That's basically what we have seen since the inception. 
after the TARP when this one-time thing and suggestion of a thing was $700 billion was going to fix everything, and it didn't. So they went on the QE2, Operation Twist, QE3, and on and on. None of it's working, as you all know. Shouldn't SLV be performing better? Yes, it should be, but it's not. There's lots of reasons for that. We write about it almost every month in the Morgan Report. Brian, uh, what kind of feedback are you hearing from uh, Golden Silver? He put out a, uh, a bunch of people that um, – have been in his program for a while. You might be able to get on his website and watch some of those videos. He did that specifically because he's gotten that question from many people. Arthur writes, two years ago, I purchased one ounce Sunshine Mint and half ounce Perth Mint. You're the snake silver coins. What I have observed over the last two years is how the sell prices on the Sunshine Mint one ounce bars have remained constant while the one half Perth Mint snake silver have increased substantially. Uh, excuse me, I'm aware of the higher premium involved. Is there any more value to buy at Pandas, limited series by the Royal Canadian Mint, the Birds of Prey, Lunar Series, etc.? <coughs> actually, yes. And I have uh, spoken about this, or actually, I, should say, I have written about it. Actually, I've spoken about it, too. And it's a pretty good way to buy bullion with a boost. And this, of course, is up to you. But uh, you know, if you're willing to do it, uh, I think it's worth it. But again, this does increase the risk, Arthur. But again, I've done it myself. I bought some of the uh, uh, Lunar Series for my daughters. I used to get them every year. I haven't done it in several. They're adults now. Uh, I bought from the Canadian Mint a couple of boxes uh, back when things I was going, had better times than what we're doing right now. And they do carry a higher premium. So certainly something to you know, consider, and you've done it, and I can, I would say continue. Uh, Chris, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I can hopefully base my future around the markets. I'm not a trader, more of an investor of accumulated physical silver and gold. Uh, I'm, I am not too concerned about the performance of the investments for lack at the present, as I know the future event, they will come into their own and will be performing better than anything else at the time. Between now and the time, Though I would like to know if it is possible to trade in a way that can support one's lifestyle, and if any of your subscriptions give guidance that allow me to trade full time. No, uh, my position trading is not uh, enough unless you have huge positions, which I wouldn't recommend. It's too much risk uh, to trade for a living. I do have friends. I did a, a webinar, actually, a physical seminar with Courtney Smith years ago. Courtney does teach you how to trade for a living. He's one that I would recommend. Uh, if you get on his website, just Google Courtney Smith. Uh, tell him, you know, you uh, listen to David Morgan, and I suggested that he try, you know, Chris, you try his course. Um, so that's that answer. All right. John writes a long one here. Follow the money, follow the silver. Uh, the paper fiscal trail leads to JP Morgan and the short paper. They buy the physical below my production costs. They've been doing this for four years and asking 400 tons. This basically all comes from uh, Butler's work. Uh, let's see, that's their business model. How long have they been doing this? No one really knows, including Butler. Um, let's see. They are creating a shortage, and if they can bankrupt a lot of mines in the shortage, it will last a long time. It takes years to get a mine up and going. That's correct. I'm sorry, but this is the sweet and short of it all. I don't have the time to list a ton of other facts. Like purchase of silver has been more than my production last year with J.P. Morgan, 20%, China, 20%, India, 20%. Do these miners have blood on the street? Yes. Yes, they do. I agree. Uh, Bearing an event looking at one to two years more of accumulating by J.P. Morgan, just a guess. This is all, I'm reading his uh, email. But there is a sweet spot on the time scale depending on how everything lines up. Only J.P. Morgan knows what event will trigger the launch. Not fact check, just went off memory after 10 articles I read. Looking for your opinion on this line of thought. I still think J.P. Morgan has the amount of silver that Butler maintains. I did this for the Morgan Report, and I did it right in front of everybody. I went into the domains and showed uh, the printouts so people could look at them. They're in the archives if you're a member or if you're a new member. Uh, Time will tell. Certainly, they have an influence. I'm not saying they don't, but as far as the physical influence, I don't think that they have the amount that Butler thinks that they do. Okay, uh, Patrick. 
Thanks, David, for the straight talk. 110 ounce bars or silver eagles. I prefer small over large. I've answered that before during this webinar. Thanks for the opportunity. To get your expert opinion. Given the probability of facing a worldwide deflationary bust, where historically precious metals also lose value temporarily from the point of view of a moderately educated investor on financial instruments, would you use to, what would you use to protect and maximize your returns in the precious metal space? Physical ETFs, funds, shares of miners, and in general markets like options, treasury notes, cash, or currencies. Please mention a little about any order in terms of time. Example, hold a base of 5% mix of precious metals now at point X going to this, point Y. All of the you know, this is all great stuff. This would be why you would subscribe to Morgan Report. I mean, I cannot do that here and now and give you answers to all this stuff. They're all great questions. And even though we do our due diligence, it's really a very uh, strong foundational situation for a general precious metals investor. Uh, that would give them the opportunity to move onward from there. So, in other words, there isn't a one-size-fits-all, but we do when the, how to use the Morgan Report when you are a member. You should read that. You should print it out. You should highlight it. Now, we go through different scenarios based on your age, risk tolerance, et cetera, on how to maximize what this guy's asking you. But certainly, I can't do that. And even if I gave you everything you wanted, Simon, it would change maybe a month from now, depending on what the markets do. But that's why you would get the motor report, because the report will be changing. It's a dynamic feature that we update and again, go through the companies, et cetera, every month. My wife and I have a substantial overbug amount worth of precious metal stored in a private vault here in the U.S. As part of my traditional IRA, I'm retired. I can take delivery on that at any time. Would it be wise to take delivery now just in case government goes, hey, we well, just on everything? Well, right, Lynn, tough call. I mean, you know, I like the better safe than sorry, but that's a lot of money. I didn't name it uh, unless you've got a private vault or whatever. I might split the difference. I might, uh, if you're a member, why don't you write that question to me? I have some ideas on what you might do if you take it out on where you could store it. That would be safe and you could get to it. Moving on, the next question, David. Do you see any scenario where silver would not be some component of the monetary system? It hasn't been since 1873 in official terms, although it really ended in 1965 in the U.S. Uh, so it really hasn't been part of the monetary system. Uh, do I see where it would be relegated just to industrial usage? Probably not. There's too many people like me that know its monetary history. Uh, so, you know, if you're talking about 100 years where it's delegated to industrial usage only, possibly. I don't really know the answer. I don't think in my lifetime, David, you're going to see it relegated to just industrial use. Um, remember, the word for silver and money is the same in uh, many languages, including the Torah. So the Jewish influence there, believe it or not, uh, looks at silver more as money than gold. Again, believe it or not, look it up on Google, do your own research. Don't trust me on anything. You can uh, verify whatever you need to. Ron writes, do you feel the precious metals industry is close to capitulation, similar to the beginning of the last gold markets turn in the early 2000s? Not really. I think we can still muddle on here for a while longer. I think this year is going to be up, but not significantly. Again, a black swan or something happening in the oil market or banking system or bail-ins could change all that. I don't rule it out. The one thing I should mention and will now before moving on is that I'm definitely very fearful of the bail-in situation. And because of that, it's very difficult to get cash out of a bank, at least in North America, uh, the best way to do it is to write a check to a reputable bullion dealer and buy physical metal. And that's a good way to exit a lot of your cash into the ultimate money that's never failed. Yes, I know the price goes up and down in paper terms, but the paradigm shift you need to make is one that is true wealth and do you have any. And if you do, then you're in a lot better shape than uh, about 99.7% of the population of the globe. So if you're in the elite class. I don't uh, necessarily like the elites whatsoever, but you're in a very small percentage group when you own physical precious metals. That's why it's so precious. Um, Jurgen, based on your reports of the last few years, silver is supposed to be one of the best safe investments. Recent history has shown your predictions have been wrong. 
why should I prescribe? I think you mean subscribe to your service, which has not been good guidance. Well, um, I don't think I'm going to have Jurgen as a subscriber. Uh, basically, if you look at you know what I've said, and you go back to again a lot of the free information, I look at it for a lot of different ways. But boiling this down to the essence of the way I read your question is like there's never been in the history of what's recorded that the monetary system based on a fiat system hasn't failed. And if you have a 10 or 20 percent relationship with the precious metals, either physical mining shares or combination thereof, you are in a protected state. And so, you know, most people aren't upset when uh, they have, you know, homeowners insurance and their house doesn't burn uh, to keep paying the insurance premium. So that's the way I look at it for most people. Now, I know that many subscribers are much more involved in that, and that's their call, not mine. So, again, if you go back to what I talked about at the beginning of the webinar, and that is, uh, that uh, some of the stocks that we've recommended have been well even in this bear market, certainly not all of them. Uh, we were first on the zinc study. Uh, a lot of the bonus reports just keep you uh, out of the market. If you look at, like, uh, Archie's rule, which is one of the special reports, you may be able to make a determination. If you use the Morgan report and, and do what it says, uh, you'd be stopped out of almost all your positions right now and holding cash. Uh, so there's a lot of things that if you really know what we really do, uh, looking from your perspective, I see how you get the idea of what you get. But as far as being a permable, I am somewhat, but I have called the tops. I certainly called the major one. Um, I wish I would have hedged longer than I did, but I didn't. Uh, but all markets go up and down. I think now is a better time to buy than to sell. And certainly it depends on what your goals, your aspirations, and what you do personally if this service would be of value to you. Most people find it that are in the sector valuable relative to other services. Okay. Uh, question. Hi, David. Do you think Jim Rickards and the Saudi Royals could be de-pegged from the dollar? And if so, what would be the impact of gold and silver? Haven't thought of it off the cuff. Um, first of all, I do follow Rickards' work. I think he's a very good thinker. I did see him in New Orleans when I was there doing at the gold show. Uh, I like his, his thinking. Uh, could the real be de-pegged? Yes, it could. Would it? What would it do? Ultimately, the, the, the answer is that the, the run to gold will happen at some point. And when that happens, that's going to be the ultimate place to go. And that is uh, unpredictable as far as timing, but very predictable as far as it will happen. So now I'm going to talk to my webmaster here real quick. And um, see, I think we have some new questions, right? So let me look at those. <clears throat> so let me see here. here we go. All right. Okay. Yeah. I see. So I'm go here, ahead. David. Yep, I'm here, David, and we did have uh, a few more come in while you were on the call. Okay. Um, I can just read them off to you if yeah, you want. And... Yeah, let's read them off. That would be good. Okay, perfect. This one's from Martin. He says, hi, what about Harry Dent's theory, the big deflation, the dollar king, and precious metals being the most toxic investments for the next uh, years? Well, I think Harry's an excellent salesman. I think he's a pretty deep thinker. Uh, I think the best thing to do is watch the interview my friend Mike Maloney did with Harry Dent. You can probably Google it or go to Mike's website, goldsilver.com, or go to his video channel, which is better on YouTube. I think he's got like 150,000 subscribers. And look for that interview. I think that would uh, be the summation of what I would say with Harry. I think when you do extremes like that, it's very good for marketing. It's an extremely good marketing technique. I mean, if I said silver is going to 50 cents, uh, and there's a free report, silver is going to 50 cents, said by Silver Guru, David Morgan would probably get a lot of people in there, and then they'd build my list, and it could market to you all. And, on and on and on it goes. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if Harry really believes that. Again, I think the best thing to do would be look at Mike's interview of him. I think you get a more balanced idea of, uh, you know, what Harry's really uh, up to on that. But, um, and, you know, in his defense, I mean, uh, no one knows, but I think the deflation thing is a little overdone, certainly. You know, where is the market overvalued now? If you look at an objective basis, it's in the equity markets. It's in the S&P. It's in the Dow. 
And of course, the big one is the debt markets, which we're all very, very fearful of, including yours truly, and I've said that for years. The biggest money will be made by shorting the bond, but will you be able to collect the other side? And the answer is, I don't know, because the counterparty risks are so systemic, they are so connected bank to bank, that um, it, may not, uh, it may not pay off. Or it could pay off where you get a Zimbabwe, you know, billion-dollar bill, and it's not worth anything. That's doubtful. I don't think that's the case. I don't see a hyperinflation, a true hyperinflation in the U.S., although I couldn't rule it out entirely. Okay, Bruce, what's the next one? All right. This one is from Robert. Hi, David. The PM seemed to be holding up fairly well over the last couple of weeks, yet the mining stocks are getting clobbered, even on a day like today when the general market seemed to be doing okay. Any thoughts? Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, since the advent of the ETFs, the analysis of the general equity market and the mining stocks has been much more difficult. Uh, and I've had to, you know, I've experienced this now for years. And I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just being, you know, very honest here. So in the old days, before the advent of all these derivatives that we've now experienced for multiple decades, the only way to experience leverage through the gold and silver markets, generally speaking outside of the futures and options market, was to use the mining equity markets. And so there was a lot more participation by managed money and hedge funds in those earlier days. Now, any hedge fund worth its weight does not want to experience the uh, the idiosyncrasies of uh, mining equity because there's too many variables. There's a uh, management risk, country risk, nationalization risk, mining flood risk, weather risk, uh, taxation risk. I mean, there's all these risks. So the money flow has not been to the equity side this time for leverage. It's been in the ETFs and then have ETFs that are two times or three times up or down. So that money basically isn't in the equity side this time. Having said that, I still think that the equity side offers the most value, especially for your average investor, because it's a buy and hold investment for the most part. And since it's so unloved, there are obviously some very sophisticated, very smart hedge fund types and money manager types that are in this market, even at a schoolboy level right now, which means they're basically accumulating very undervalued situations. So more specifically, what you asked, I think I'm remembering the question is, you know, why now? There's discontinuities day to day. Um, I mean, I haven't looked at the screen much this morning. I had errands I had to do this morning. But regardless, usually the equities are a leading indicator. So if they're performing poorly and uh, general metals markets are um, steady to moving up, a one-day event doesn't get me excited. If it happened for like a week or two, it would and it would be indicating something. So let's take the scenario where the metals markets are going up and the mining equities are generally going down. That would indicate that there might be a discontinuity coming up where the metals are going to sell off. That would be what it would be indicating about 80% of the time. The other 20% of the time would be there could be a break where maybe something's happening overall equity market where perhaps they're going to uh, stop trading for a while or there might be some discontinuity in settlement or something like that. So these are cues, these are clues. This is why I like to do both. Uh, and I've advocated physical from the get-go and always will. But uh, a very difficult question, a very good question. Uh, and again, if you can buy something you know, under the cost of what it takes to produce it, meaning you know, the physical market and especially some are the mining equities, and you have patience, and you have, let's say, the uh, the risk aversion that it takes to be uh, kind of a lone wolf in a situation like this where everyone hates this market. It's certainly worth it, but again, you don't want to over allocate. And the other way to do it is to just watch it. And most people poo poo the charts. I still use them. I still think they're valuable. I've never looked at them as like some technicians that that's all you need. I've never looked at them that way. But regardless, they do give us some good cues and clues. And so you would have to wait for a major, I would say a major, for a good uptrend to start on large volume. And once that was established, you'd be safer getting in there than you would try to pick a bottom. So I hope I answered that. What's the next question? 
All right, David. So um, next question comes from Craig. Um, using big banks, J.P. Morgan, for example, as a proxy for flooding the silver market with naked short orders through the Federal Reserve Corporation has been going on for quite some time now. The age-old silver-to-gold ratio seems rather meaningless when the type of power money, JP, FRC, CME, COMEX, uh, can perpetrate for sets a long period of time. Given the fact that the United States is masters at manipulation, false flag events for whatever the serpent needs, what is per the perceived probability that the United States corporation makes silver illegal to own to the rest of the sovereign United States of America under the guise of a shortage that they have been manipulating themselves all along. Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> good, good question. Uh, in my mind, and you're asking me, uh, very doubtful. I mean, the problem they have with silver is that it is an industrial commodity. And so what do you, how are you going to outlaw silver? You have to outlaw a specific part of the silver market. So you're going to outlaw chandeliers, you're going to outlaw silver goblets, you're going to outlaw silver plates, forks, and knives. What are you going to outlaw? Uh, so then it have to be a specific form. So let's say you outlaw silver coins, for an example. Well, silver eagles, legal tender, at law, by Congress, started in 1986. It's actually called the Civil Liberty Program, which I very seldom voice, but that's the law. Uh, we refer to them as silver eagles all the time. But so now you're going to confiscate something that would be illegal to confiscate because it's legal tender. So I doubt it. If anything would be confiscated, it probably gold would be more likely than silver. Silver has been discarded by the monetary authorities for so long. Now, what I could see happen, and this is continuing with your question, is where we get to a point where the authorities, and we'll just call it the U.S. Corp., says that silver is a strategic metal, we need it for the war effort, and no COMEX deliveries will be honored from now on. And all COMEX inventory are allocated to the war effort. So you might not be able to take that subset where if you stood for a delivery on the COMEX for commercial bars, you would just have to settle in paper. And that could be used as an excuse to not settle in physical because they don't have it anymore. It's so tight that they can't produce enough to make settlement. Although very little comes off the COMEX, as we know, uh, doesn't mean that they wouldn't institute something like that. So I did my best to answer that question. I am not that concerned about silver being confiscated or outlawed. In specific cases, as I just gave you, it's a possibility, a higher possibility or probability than a blanket. Uh, we don't like silver. Uh, it's outlawed. I just don't see that happening. But again, I'm just giving you my best, my study, what I've looked at for years. Doesn't make me right. Doesn't make me wrong. It is my strong opinion. But you have to do your own thinking on the topic. And depending on your conclusions, you should take actions that make sense. Uh, for your goals, your investment uh, needs, and what do you think uh, the probabilities are. Do you have another one, Bruce? Yes, I do. So this is from Tom. Silver is up 2%, but AG is down 10%. That's today. Did TPTB decide to uh, nationalize the mines? <laughs> not to my knowledge. Um, not to my knowledge. I mean, I'm laughing. I mean, you know, I don't rule out any days hardly I mean in today's world it's extremely difficult to um, you know, rule out anything because as I said at the beginning of this um, the whole global empire at all the central banks regardless of what country of origin uh, are basically in a desperate modality so no telling what they might try but I don't think so um, that's a really really tough situation because even if they go for a nationalization which has been, ha has been done. I mean, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat this, but if you look at something like a First Majestic that he referred to, or that kind of thing, I mean, you look at what the, uh, you know, the laws are that founded the company and where they obeyed them and everything, that it would be a real mess. I mean, it's obviously, a company like that would just sit by and say, okay. So I just think we got an off day. I don't know enough. I haven't been able to look at the screen. I've been doing this webinar, so, you know, maybe there's something – else that I'm missing. I just haven't had the time to research it. So that's my best answer at this point in time. 
uh, something came up that was significant. It would be something I'd write about in the Morgan Report for the next issue, as an example. All right, well, let me thank you all. And again, I apologize uh, that we had some technical difficulties. We've used the system many times, haven't experienced it before, but uh, lo and behold, we did. Um, we wish you the best. Uh, if you're not inclined to buy the uh, Morgan Report at the very low price that it stands at now for the next 13 days, so be it. Uh, part of the reason for this was to encourage you to do so and save some money, especially in the long term. Nonetheless, the free list, uh, which was primarily who entered into this webinar, although we did have some paid members, so thank you all, uh, consider to uh, continue on the free list. We do put out good information more than a lot of these uh, uh, free e-letters because we really do want to help people in general. I guess the last thing I can say is... Uh, we wish you all the best. Trying times. Uh, continue to become educated in all matters of life and uh, be a lifelong learner. I think it's the best way to live. So I'll sign off with that. Uh, Rich, go ahead and take us out, stop the recording, and wish everybody the very best.